Hi and welcome to my maths class. Before we do deductions, you need to make sure that you go over the summary of grade 10. The revision exercise for grade 10 will teach you or explain to you most of the deductions. From grade 10 to grade 11, the deductions are not very different except for one specific thing which is the period. So before you continue, make sure you are fine with all the deductions that you had learned in grade 10 because they will discuss maximum, minimum, everything else. The only thing that changes is the period. Now in grade 10, you had learned that for sin and cause, it is 360 degrees and for 10, it is 180 degrees. Now what happens is, now your equation has slightly changed. We have now started fiddling with the x-axis. So our b has started changing our x-axis. And once we started changing our x-axis, we had started changing our period. What we do now is to calculate the period, you're going to take the standard period and then you are going to divide it by b. So whatever value is there, you would get the period. So let's take, for example, if I gave you 10, 3 theta, the standard period is 180 degrees. I'm now going to divide it by 3 and that means my period is now 60 degrees. So that means within 60 degrees, you'd have a one complete graph. When I'm doing deductions, you'd actually see how we're applying this. So besides this, you must be familiar with all the work that was discussed in the grade 10 summary regarding the domain, range, maximum, period, amplitude, everything. Let us look at this graph. Most of the deductions, when they start, they would ask you to get the equations, okay? So, if we're looking, the first one is saying f of x is equal to a sin x and g of x is equal to 10 x minus b. Now, in your examination, you will see they would clearly mark f of x and g of x. Like I, how I've marked it, you don't need to go and think which one is f of x, which one is g of x. It will already be on the drawing. Now, if they say calculate the value of a, that is a grade 10 adjustment. We would calculate A by saying the highest point minus the lowest point divided by 2. Remembering that it is within one period range. So can you see, if you look here, even though it's not your standard period, you usually know the graph goes like this, right? But you can see that's not one, it's not happening, that's not going to go. But if you still see, this is still one complete graph. So within one period range is how you calculate the A. So a is equal to 3 plus 3 over 2, which gives me 3. So my a in this sense is 3. Now, what is b? b is a movement of the graph. Now I'm looking at 10. You know that 10 starts at 0, 0. Now it is starting at 45 and 0, which means that the graph has moved 45 degrees to the right. So b is going to equal to 45 degrees. When you substitute it into the formula, we're going to have 10 x minus 45 degrees. So our two equations are f of x is equal to 3 sin x and g of x is equal to 10 x minus 45 degrees. Then they are asking what is the domain and the range of f of x. Now the domain means where is the graph starting and where is it ending. So this domain is going to be from minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees. The range is the highest and the lowest. We're looking at the highest, which is 3, and the lowest is minus 3. Keeping in mind that when you give your answer, you have to give it lowest first, then highest. If you swap it, it's incorrect. Then it says give the maximum of f of x. That is still, maximum just means one number, so it is 3. Look at your graph and write correctly. If you write maximum and it looks like your range, it's incorrect. You can't just tell me 3 and put it in a bracket and that's it. You have to write correctly. Now it says determine where g of x is greater than 0. Now g of x is the 10 graph. Greater than 0 means it is on the top. 
of the x-axis because it's saying y is positive. So what is our answer? It's from minus 35 to just before just before negative 45. Now because it's an asymptote, it's a round bracket. Then again, it's from 45 and then it goes just till before 135. Again, round bracket because of the asymptote. Okay, now they're saying determine where g of x is smaller than f of x. Now what you must understand, when they say smaller, it means, listen, g of x is under f of x. Remember when they want the answers, they want it in terms of x. So the only relevant points are my x values. So we're starting here, which is minus 180. Remember, I'm usually when they draw the graphs, they tend to chop it off at 180 or 360. Or, so this part is basically the end of your graph. Okay, at that 180 is the end of your graph. So it's from minus 180 till this coordinate, which is minus 168. Now, why am I using square brackets? Because the question has an equal to under. It is less and equal to. If they just had greater or they just had less than, then you would put round brackets. Okay, now you went on and then again it started at minus 45. Okay, and it went on till 150. Now this asymptote is a trick. You see, even though the question says greater or equal to, at minus 45, it's not going to be greater. It's basically there's nothing there. Can you see? So at minus 45, it's a round bracket. I told you in the entire trig, when you are using deductions and there's an asymptote attached to it, then it is a round bracket. Now we finish this one and we finish that one. We finish use this one and we finish use 150. Now the next one is 135. You understand why I'm using a round bracket? And then it's going on to 180, which is now a square bracket. Now, the last question says, determine the period of f of x and g of x. If you look, I told you, the period is dependent on the number that is in front here, just before the theta or the x. Now, at both of them, it's standardly 1. So, the standard period is 360 divided by what is there, which is 1. So, for a sin graph, the period is 360 degrees. For the tan, it would be 180 degrees divided by 1. So, the period for a tan theta is 180 degrees in this specific question. Remember, it is dependent on the number that is in front or let's say between your ratio and your theta. Okay, let's do another question. Now, this question is slightly different, also more challenging. Why? Because what they have done is they had actually started using their trig graph to do general solution. So in order to do this, you must be okay with your general solution. If you are not okay with your general solution, you need to go over your work or go over the video where we had discussed general solution. Now it says f of x is equal to cos 2x and g of x is sin x plus 30. Calculate the values of the points of intersection. So they want to know a. What are all these points? Now, when they do points of intersection, what they are saying is the two graphs are equal. Alright, so what you need to know and be familiar with is your general solution. They are telling us cos 2x is equal to sin x plus 30. Now, when we have a cos and sin, we are using the reduction rule. Okay, now, we know that sin 90 minus 2x, if I do reduction, it would become cos 2x. Now, once I cancel, as soon as you cancel, you have to stop. And this is in your general solution video. So, go and look at it and see if you are not strong and you don't know what I'm doing right now. Okay, so we have two solutions. The first one is in the first quadrant 
and then we're going to work in the second quadrant. Now the first quadrant says it's 90 minus 2x is equal to x plus 30 plus k360. Now why 360? Because by now you should realize that the period of a standard sun graph is 360 degrees. So after 360 it starts repeating itself. Now you can solve for x. So we're going to bring it over. We got minus 3x is going to equal to 30 minus 90, which gives me minus 60 plus k, 360. Then I'm going to divide by minus 3. So I got x is equal to 20 plus. But when you divide, remember you have to divide every term. So when I divide here by minus 3, I must divide here by minus 3. And I must divide here by minus 3. So I have plus k times 120 degrees. Now you can change this sign to a negative. Remember because it is a cycle, the k, the negative or positive wouldn't really affect you, okay? But we're going to go with this now. Right, so what are they saying? We have a general solution now. We know our general solution is x is equal to 20 minus k times 120. But they've given us a limit. Our limit is from minus 180 to 180 degrees. So what we're going to do in k, we're going to substitute and see what is within that limit. So if I substitute 0, I got x is equal to 20 degrees. Can you see? So at that point, I know it's 20 degrees. Then let's try and substitute another number. So I've got 20 minus, and then let's make it a minus 1. So I have 20 plus 120, which means x is equal to 140 degrees. So the next point it touches is 140 degrees. Now I also want to look at the negative side. So if we look at the negative side, let's try 1. x is equal to 20 minus 1 times 120 gives me minus 100, which means I'm looking at the specific point, which is minus 100. 100. You've already done minus 1, you've already done 1, and you've done 0. If you go into 2, you're going to go too high. If you're going to go into minus 2, you're going to go also too high. So we know, okay, we're done with 3 points. 1, 2, 3. But I still have a problem for this point, which means now I have to do my second option, which is second quadrant. Why second quadrant? Because sin is positive in the second quadrant, and since we cancel out sin, we use the sin rules. So now in the sin rule, it says 90 minus 2x is equal to 180 minus x plus 30 plus k360. Now you should know your general rule. In the second quadrant, it's 180 minus, right? So I have 90 minus 2x is equal to 180 minus x minus 30 plus k360. Solving for x, I'm going to have minus x is going to equal to 60. I got 180 minus 90 minus 30 gives me 60 plus k, 360. So my x is equal to minus 60 plus k. You can minus, you can change the sign there. Because remember, if I change the sign of 1, I must change the sign of all. So I have x is equal to minus 60 minus k 360. Now let's do our general solution. Let's substitute 0. So I'll have x is equal to minus 60 minus 0, which is equal to minus 60. And now I've got my last point. You don't need to go further because you, you can look at the graph and you can say, listen, I need 1, 2, 3, 4 points. I got 4 points. So I don't need to go further. And there's it. When they say calculate the points of intersection, you now have the x-coordinate. And how do you get y? In order to get y, you can simply substitute the x value into any of the equation. So if we say cos 2x, you can say cos 40, 2 times 20. So it means at this point, it will be 0, 0,766. Then we're looking at 140. Zero comma 
174. Now read the question. When you're doing this work, be careful. If they say round off to one decimal, round off to one. If they say round off to two, round off to two. Many times they only want the X values, then you don't even bother with this. If they want the Y values, you know, you, then you go and you continue. So make sure that you are uh, doing the correct work, okay? That you are answering the question. Right, for minus 60 and then we're doing, and the last one is minus 0, 0,94. So to get the y coordinates, we're simply going to substitute into the original. But for this year, this one year, when you substitute into original, this you must know is everywhere. It's in your graphs. It's in your trig. It's everywhere. To get y, substitute into the original. Now the next question is, determine where g of x, which is the sin graph, is greater than 0. Okay. So... They're telling us determine where g of x is greater than 0. Now you see they intentionally trying to see do you know this coordinate. If you know it's x plus 30 degrees, you should know that the original graph starts at 0, 0. But it has moved 30 degrees. So it is minus 30. Okay. And this original point usually cuts where? It usually cuts at 180, but it has moved 30 degrees, so it's now 150 degrees. Okay, so where is g of x greater than 0? It is from minus 30 right till 150. Now look at the question. The question has an underline a greater or equal to, which means that my answer must also be in square brackets. Now let's go to the next one. It says, determine where g of x is smaller or equal to f of x. Now, g of x is the sin graph. It's smaller at that place. Then all of a sudden it's on top. And then from year to year again it's under. And then all of a sudden it's on top. And then again it's under. Now when we look at that, we are only interested in the x point. So look. At that point, it's minus 180 till minus 100. So you write it down like that. Write it as you see it. Minus 180 to 100. Minus 100. Minus 180 to minus 100. Now remember, if you're looking at your graph, you're looking at the start of the line, the end of the line. Now I'm looking at the start of the line, minus 60 to the end of the line, 20. Then again, start of the line, 140, end 180. So if you just get into the habit of looking at it as you seeing it, from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, all graph deductions are read that way. It is read from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. As long as you get into the habit, write what you see from the left to the right. You will get it correct. Then they say, now you, you've done, you said determine where g of x, which is the sin graph, is lower, so it's under the cos graph. Then it says, give the period of f of x. Now if you look at f of x, that is important. Can you see there is a 2 there? The standard period of a cos graph is 360 degrees. But we must divide it by 2, which means that this period is now 180 degrees. Then give the period of the sin graph, the number in front is 1, so I got 360 divided by 1, which is 360 degrees. Thank you for watching.